Alrighty builders, welcome back to the Built Not Bought channel and episode two of the 80 series build. Now before I go any further, I encourage you guys to smash that subscribe button below, hit the like button and settle in for an awesome episode. Now last week you saw me tackle the 80 and drop the bombshell that I'm not dropping this thing into you. We are doing a panel truck conversion. So we started welding in the sides, basically gutted the whole thing to get it ready to start doing that. So this week we're picking it up right where we left off to, it's raining too, oh my God. That was crazy. Alrighty, now we've got the bars and bits and pieces in. Sorry if the lighting is crap. Is they've bloody put new sunshade. I don't know what they are, like the clear bits, and it's just pumping down in here. Oh my god, I don't know what to do with myself. Anyway, so we've got the bars in now. What I did. Uh, I got the missus to actually make a bit of a stencil here. Now, if you don't have a missus, um, well, Tinder? Anyway, she did a magnificent job of uh, a bit of arts and craft that you learn in preschool and basically made me a nice template out of card. And now, working with card, anything like this when it comes to sheet metal, I did the same, obviously, building the bull bar on the patrol. It's so much easier to cut cardboard with a pair of scissors than a piece of steel because steel, you can't use scissors, it's a pain in the butt. So, once you get this pretty nice, I got that nice and close, um, kind of hand drawn now. The lines weren't amazing, but I did end up heading around to a mate's shop and used his guillotine um, brake press and got the lines a lot straighter. And here we go with a piece of 1.6 mil steel. Now what I've done is just checked it. A couple of little notches had to come out, but it's looking pretty flush. So the plan now is to basically tack on that bottom end. And as we work the tacks up the side, you can actually pull the top down. Ugh. And then once you get to the top, it should give that nice curve. Now there's a bit of tension in there, but once you start welding in that and getting those tacks in the top, it should hold its shape and then we'll be looking pretty nice and it should follow that curve there of the original body. Now, of course, another thing to remember as well, obviously doing it with the heat, we're gonna cycle around as we do the tacks. You don't wanna create a whole bunch of heat in the same spot. So as we move around, we'll go side to side, keep moving, keep that temperature down so it doesn't warp. Dumb bags! Dumb bags, baby! <laughs> so some people might believe that I actually build my cars. It's a complete lie. I just have my minions <laughs> do it for me. We changed tactic. I originally was just going to leave some tacks and fill it with bog, but I'm thinking once I grind it back flush, it's going to weaken each weld and it could possibly peel back. So we've gone for a bit more of a weldy method and just running each tack higher and higher each time to essentially do a full weld each side. Um, it's a slow process. So Max got more patience than me. <laughs> but that should help keep it a bit stronger and fill the gap less bog, which is great. So that's what we're doing at the moment. This rust? Well, we're 2,000 k's in, so it's due for a bang. That's what ends up happening. <laughs> or is it just got the cancer from the pathfinder? No. <laughs> See, this, this proves like no rust proofer could ever get into here. Yeah, right. Yeah. And a million other spots. So it's in it between all the joints. It makes you wonder how useful rust proofing could be. Yeah. I will say there's a lot of plastic in uh, new cars. That's why they're so light, I guess. I did a poll. Because this is a hooped bar, the pole, what, what people prefer. The new modern style or the hoop. And it was 50 50. No. So Literally. No one was no one really helped. Looking shimiko. Okay. 
What are they, little pumps they're or turbos. something? They're turbos! No, they're not turbos. It's a bi turbo, that's why there's two of them. Oh, yeah, these are two <laughs> turbos. Anyway, the bar's on. Mac has done a mad job with the uh, dime bags over here, too. So, fully welded each side. Now, we've just got to hit it with a grinder, flush it up. That's also like you got to watch the heat on that as well because the grinder will create a whole lot of heat. Not as much as a welder, but it can still warp, so that's sort of the next step. Alrighty, guys, we're going to be looking at the engine bay again now. In the last episode, we did gut the whole thing, get all the wiring out of the way, so now we're going to look at painting it. What you didn't see actually was the missus. She's amazing. She went around and sanded the whole engine bay while I was fluffing around with this back half of the car. So, what we're going to do is go straight on top with some colour. Normally you want to prime things as if it's down to the bare metal, but with an engine bay it's quite fiddly and finicky and it's not really something you see when you're driving. Obviously, it's only when you pop the bonnet, so it doesn't be super amazing. So what I've done is just scuffed it up with some 180-320 grit um, and not gone right through to the uh, to the metal, so kept a bit of that base coat paint on there. It is white, which will kind of help this colour pop a bit. I'm doing a bit of a gunmetal grey, so it will cover quite nicely being a darker colour. Um, now this was just pre-mixed down at super cheap. You can pretty much go in and colour match what you want if you have a specific vehicle. But I just kind of made this one up on the spot. Um, and then once we've done that, a few coats, maybe two or three coats of the colour, and then we'll finish it off with just some of their acrylic clear coat. Now that just goes in with their um, thinners. But both of these use sort of 50-50. I think it's one part for the clear and one and a half parts thinners for um, that mix there. And then once you do a full coat of clear, that's the finished product. And that's all we're gonna need in the engine bay and that'll keep it, just take the eye off the crappy sort of white that was in there and, and make it look schmick with this new motor in there. So let's get into it. You guys have seen plenty of me painting on this channel. You know what it's all about. Let's get into it. Alrighty, well there you have it, a gunmetal grey engine bay. Now the coverage wasn't amazing, but being an engine bay, it's pretty tricky to get in and around the little bits and pieces. And once the motor's in and all the hoses, bits and pieces and that, you won't even really be able to see much of that. Um, so it's really just to take the eye off it and make it match the rest of the car once that's done. So pretty stoked with the result. Now we can move on to the next bit. So this happened. Yeah, look, here's the story. Basically, last night we'd finish off that gunmetal grey look and it was, uh, I kind of liked it, it was good. It was what I wanted, right? Came back this morning and, uh, well, everything changed. It, it just, I came in, walked in, looked at it and gone, what the hell have I done? I don't know whether it was the finish on it, it wasn't kind of glossy enough. Um, it kind of looked a little bit kind of bluey, not really grey and I uh, just, it was horrible. So, I've just gone and bombed it black. I've used like a black lacquer. Um, it's a one coat kind of finish, it's got a gloss finish to it and I reckon it's come up a treat and it's pretty much... It just made that engine bay look a little bit more specky, which is kind of what I wanted and not the shit that was in there before. Now black is notorious for being difficult to paint on the external of a car. Now in an engine bay, it kind of takes you off a lot of things. Anyway, it's done now, I'm sick of painting this engine bay. I've done it three or four times now, so we're moving on. Okay, thanks to Maka for doing the welding around these panels. Now we're getting very close to the finishing end of this panel truck. Now I've just put a ruler across here and mostly down here is a low spot, which is good. So I can fill it with um, the fiberglass and bog to get it looking smooth. But right near the bottom and top, there was a little bit I had to take off for the grinder on the original panel to try and get that level right. But it's looking pretty good now. I'm happy with it. So I'm going to throw a coat of that body filler on. Um, sand it back and then we can start seeing where the high and low spots are. Throw some primer on and see if it looks like half decent paint job. Tell you what, the amount of times I lose this bloody thing. Ugh. It's a bit low. Anyway, hello guys and welcome to this week's tech tip. Now, it's a pretty basic one today, but you know, it blows me away with how many people don't know how to do this. I was at a four-wheel drive show last year, or year before last, and uh, 
ran a little competition on stage about who could repair a puncher the quickest and the amount of people who didn't know what the hell they were bloody doing was quite satisfying, I'm not gonna lie, but no good. If you're out in the bush and you didn't know how to change a flat tire, obviously this isn't a four wheel drive tire, but I came up with the idea to do this tech tip because my trailer went out to use it and it had a bloody flat tire and there's a screw straight in the guts of it. So we'll come down here and have a look-see and I'll walk you through it. Alrighty, so generally you'll get a little kit like this. This one's super old, I've had it for years, but most uh, punch repair kits for on the road look like this. So my little puncher is right here. There's a screw there and I'm pretty sure that's where it's leaking from. So obviously first thing here, we've got a pair of pliers. We want to first remove what is in there. Um, you can do this with air still in the tire and you can do this when the tire is still on the car, which is great as well. So rip that out of there. I'm sorry if this camera over here misses just all the angles. I have no idea where it's pointing. Ugh, can't even see what I'm doing. I'm trying to do this on, on an angle you guys can see. So, oh. Jeez, it's really in there. Oh. All right, so you just work it out so it starts backing out. You won't need any power tools or anything. It will just come out with a pair of pliers, just like this. I can already hear it. There's a dead set leak there. Right. Cool thing with these, they normally come with a set of instructions. I've done it that many times. You basically need to shove the rod in. You've got to actually extend the hole a little bit. A bit of lubricant, you know. And you just go in and out the hole a few times, you know. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm oh. out. I've got to get a better angle on this. That's feeling pretty big. There we go, that's a proper hole, right. Then you want to get one of your little repair, what do they call them, the gooeys, the gooey boys. Thread the needle and you want to pull it sort of halfway through this little tool here, just like that. Then once you've lubed it up and created your hole, push this one in. Now you don't want to go all the way. There we go. So we got it in there, and then you just pull it out nice and quick, and that'll actually cut it on its way out. Look at that, repaired puncher. Comes with a little blade as well, obviously driving the car, the road will wear it off as well, but you can nip the end off. And it's that simple to repair on the road, I always keep one of these kits with me. If you get a puncher, you basically pull the nail out, the screw out, whatever. Make the hole a bit bigger with this guy, Put your gooey in and thread the needle. Push that in as far as you can. It's actually got a stopper here so you can't go too far. And then rip it out nice and quick. And that is it, puncher repaired. <sighs> Back to the episode. I'm gonna go have a shower or something. I don't know. Alrighty, now I wasn't gonna show this specifically on the video because I thought it was just a bit of a tidy up, but that many people were asking about this on my Instagram and a few comments in the last episode, and that is about doing this little rust repair in the corner here. Now essentially, it's gonna be treated the same as when we kind of filled in that door handle. Once you've cut the rust out and cleaned it up, you essentially just wanna plate it up with a piece like that. My phone's ringing. Man. Hello? I was filming. You always ring when I film. Where do you get them? Hmm, righto. Oh, where were we? Right, yeah, so rust repair. Basically, I've cut out the rust, it's like a cancer. You wanna get rid of it as much as you can. I still got a bit more grinding back to do. Um, and if there's a little bit of surface rust left, worst case, you can just spray a bit of paint on it. And as soon as it's sealed from the atmosphere, it's gonna stop continuing to oxidize and rust away. So I'm gonna do that, cut up a little piece that size and basically tack it in the same way we've done that. And then it's just a case of grinding the, the welds back, giving it a bit of bog and continuing on from there. But down the back here, this is where I'm getting real worried because I started grinding the rust back and I've seen a shitload of bog appear and it's just, it's bog just all the way down here. So I'm worried to keep grinding it back. And it's like, I could lose this whole corner. So who knows what's happened here. I'm pretty much gonna stop where we are and just clean it up with some bog again here. And like I say, just seal the rust that's already happened with some coating and hope that it doesn't get any worse. Right, <coughs> I feel like I'm choking. I throw my shirt in the dryer once and it just shrinks like crazy. Oh, but speaking of shirts, if you do want to grab one for yourself over on the website, we've just completely restocked all the hoodies, singlets, t-shirts and merchandise over there, even the stickers as well. So if you want to grab one, jump down. There's a link in the description below over to our website. Grab some merch, be part of the family. No matter what they call it.
All right, let's got towards the finishing stage here now. So we welded in that plate, I grinded back um, the bits of tack welds around there and now I've just bogged it up to finish it off. Um, there was a bit of gutter issue there as well and I pretty much just had to use my finger and kind of feed the bog in there just to seal it off a bit. I mean, this whole way down the rail kind of looks a bit gross. I think from factory they have a piece of silicon or something they put in there to stop that so you can't get it real pretty. Um, but at least it's cleaned it up, taken the eye off it and once um, the thing's been finished with the paint or wrap you won't even know it's there. Simple repair for a bit of rust there um, and you can pretty much apply that to most parts on a car, floor, roof, whatever. And it only took me like an hour or so in between phone calls for two hours. Also this little mount here people have been asking, little three footed monster. My friend Mark Boxer who's also got a panel truck like this, um, he's come up with this little design here and it's um, real handy for those GoPros, even major cameras like my other mirrorless camera can actually go on that mount as well. Good for putting on the sides of cars if you're off-road off as well. So I'll track a link down below. And I think there's a code there you can use as well. So definitely go grab yourself some. All right, legends, that just about wraps it up for this week's episode. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to subscribe to the channel so you do not miss an episode of this epic build. Last week, you guys, shit you not, you broke every single record in my YouTube books. We got the most views I'd ever had in the first 24 hours from that first episode of the 80 series. I don't know whether it's because it's Land Cruiser related content or I don't know, but you guys are absolutely smashing it. Thank you for joining along. Next episode on the 80 is an absolute cracker. We have the FZ Teardown. We're gonna start ripping this motor apart, ready for the rebuild. And um, I'm not doing it. I'm actually gonna get my girlfriend to pull this motor apart. She doesn't know really how to swing on the spanners. She's not a trained mechanic. She can ride a horse. She can, you can't really cook. We're both terrible cooks, I'm not gonna lie. But one thing's for sure, I'm gonna make her pull this whole engine apart. So make sure to not miss that episode next week. Lastly, obviously our merchandise is on our website. So jump over, there's a link down below and go and grab some. And kids, if you're watching, go hassle mum and dad. You want some built not bought stickers or a t-shirt for yourself to wear, go ahead and do that. I'm not gonna stop you, but I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take it easy. Guys, if you like this video, make sure to click up here to subscribe to the channel. Click over here for our latest merchandise on our website. And down below or to the side, I'm not sure where it is, is, is our last episode. If you haven't watched it, click on that to check it out. See you guys.